Perhaps one of the strangest moments of the American Music Awards in 1987 was the appearance of Christian crooner Pat Boone. Boone had a new album out at the time, but it took a lot of people by surprise as he went from playing gospel and R&B and country music throughout most of his career to all of a sudden covering hard rock and metal songs. The album and his change in appearance had some Christians up in arms, with some taking some pretty drastic actions. In fact, Boone would save a special four-letter word for his detractors in the religious community when he appeared on Jay Leno's Tonight Show. Stay tuned for the full story. Pat Boone would establish himself as a successful singer and actor in addition to writer and television personality. In fact, he was the second biggest charting artist of the 50s, only lagging behind Elvis Presley. He would be the number nine highest charting artist between 1955 to 1995, according to Billboard. Throughout the 50s, Boone would cover various black artists, including Little Richard and Fats Domino, with some criticizing him for cultural appropriation. But Boone was steadfast, claiming his covers broadened in those artists' appeal, telling the LA Times, Chuck Berry, Fats Domino, and Little Richard were R&B guys, and pop radio in those days never heard of R&B. There was no chance for an R&B guy to get played on pop radio until pop artists did versions of their R&B songs. All those R&B artists were thrilled, and they told me so, because their songs got to a wider audience, he'd say. By the 60s, Boone got more into gospel music, as popular tunes at the time were more focused on sex and drugs, and that clashed with his Christian faith. The pivot in Boone's career resulted in him gaining a pretty big Christian audience in America, so obviously his core audience was pretty shocked when he decided to do an album of hard rock and metal covers in 1997. He would reveal that the idea came to him during a discussion with his band members of what his next project should be. He would recall to the AV Club, My conductor one day said, You know, we've been laughing about that idea, but there are some really great songs that only metalheads know, and if we went in and did them in a different way, we could introduce them to a whole new audience. For example, if we did big band jazz arrangements and then he rattled off names of songs I really wasn't familiar with that he'd recall. Boone would discover a lot of the hard rock and metal songs two ways. One was through his conductor who made him a mixed tape, and the other was him going to different record chains incognito and buying up different band albums as he told Jay Leno in 1997. I started going into record stores, Tower and uh, Camelot and all right. these stores, Musicland, hat pulled down, dark glasses, collar <laughs> turned up. I'd like to have some uh, Rat, Please, and some Motorhead, and some <laughs> Skid Row, and some Poison, and some Scorpions, and some Metallica. And I started listening to hundreds of CDs to find terrific songs yeah. that I can do. I couldn't do most of the songs yeah. I heard. Well, let me ask you another question. I know your parents are still alive. They're in their 90s. Yeah, daddy's 90, mom is 87. Yeah. Okay, all right, now, okay. Yeah. He's a biker, too. What a, do they think this is a phase? <laughs> do they think this is a phase Pat is going? You're in your 60s. <laughs> so they say, it's just, it's just something the boy is yes. passing through. You'll grow out of it. I mean, <laughs> when it came time to choose the tracks, Boone had one rule. He would only cover songs and artists that didn't clash with his religious beliefs. The resulting album would be released in January of 1997 and be called In a Metal Mood, No More Mr. Nice Guy. The album would consist of covers of Judas Priest, Guns N' Roses, Deep Purple, Van Halen, and Jimi Hendrix to name a few. In addition to that, Boone was able to get some of the composers and musicians who played on the original recordings to join him on his album, including Ronnie James Dio and Richie Blackmore. Slash of Guns N' Roses was supposed to appear on the album and perform the solo on Paradise City, but Boone would tell the publication Inquisitor that this was 1996 and Guns N' Roses were regrouping to record their long-awaited follow-up to the Spaghetti Incident and things didn't end up working out. Dio, meanwhile, would comment on appearing on the album telling the Arizona Daily Wildcat, I never thought I'd have the chance to meet Pat Boone. I mean, he's Pat Boone, the guy's legend. Since the album was set to drop the same month as the American Music Awards, Boone decided to not only attend the show, but present an award alongside shock rocker Alice Cooper. Boone and Cooper would be presenting the award for favorite hard rock and heavy metal artist, which would be awarded to Metallica. The awards ceremony seemed like the perfect opportunity to show off Boone's new image. Dick Clark, whose company produced the award show, came up with an idea for both Cooper and Boone to trade personas that night. Cooper was supposed to wear a v-neck sweater with his hair in a knot, while holding a glass of milk on stage. Boone, meanwhile, would don a leather vest with fake piercing and tattoos and a dog collar. His costume would be designed by Elvis's former costume designer. As the award show approached, Cooper backed out of the idea, but Boone agreed to wear his outfit. 
In fact, Boone's appearance was the talk of the show, and the next day the newspapers covered his metal transformation. According to Boone, the appearance at the American Music Awards propelled the sales of his album. The record would peak at number 125 on the Billboard charts. While most people seemed cool with the whole thing, he got a tremendous amount of blowback from his Christian base, despite the fact that Boone had warned some of their leaders of what was to come that night. Boone would tell the LA Times, a lot of those songs have sensible and intelligent lyrics, you just can't hear them on the originals. For example, on Crazy Train, Ozzy is singing about the confusion of today's world. All while Boone was promoting his album, he also had a TV show on the Christian TV station Trinity Broadcasting. In fact, in February of 1997, Trinity Broadcasting would claim that they received thousands of viewer complaints about the musician's new image change. As a result, Trinity pulled Boone's gospel show off the network. The station would release a statement at the time that read, The decision was based on recent changes in the focus and content of Pat's music, which represents a different genre than the gospel, and traditional inspiration format and ministry of the Gospel America program. The network would also claim that Boone had alienated some of his core audience even before the stunt at the American Music Awards, with representatives of Trinity claiming the show was focusing less and less on gospel themes. By April of 1997, Boone would appear on the network's flagship show called Praise, telling the audience, to whatever extent somebody was wounded, I'm very sorry. That was never my intention. The audience ironically included a contingent of leather-draped bikers for Christ. He would go on to say, little did I dream that the media and a lot of Christians would take it seriously. I was really stunned that Christians, evidently by the thousands, having known me for 35 to 40 years, would think that overnight I just radically changed my orientation and all my priorities. Just because I wore some leather pants and fake tattoos and non-piercing earrings doesn't mean that I'm fundamentally a different person, he'd say. It was on the same program that they took a poll of the viewers asking whether they should bring Boone's program back. 500 votes were cast in favor of bringing the program back, while 50 votes were cast against bringing it back. Eventually, the network would renege and bring the show back. Perhaps my favorite thing that Boone said was when he appeared on Jay Leno's Tonight Show and brought up a four-letter word that the religious community should consider. God bless you. Having fun with you. You know, that's great. May I say one word? Go ahead, all one my, word. my dear friends, I mean, folks like Mercy Corps, Easter Seals, TBN, all the people that think <laughs> I've dived headfirst into the pit. <laughs> Uh, I, want, I, I want to give you a four-letter word. I'm not going to say it. I'm just going to spell it. J-O-K-E. Please look it up. There is a little humor in this thing. Well, I there's think. a lot of humor. I, I, and, you know, I think you're but great. good music. Will you come back and see us again? Thank you, guys. Yes, I will. Metallica drummer Lars Ulrich would meet Boone at the American Music Awards and share his thoughts on him covering Enter Sandman. And, and how about this Pat Boone version of this? Have you heard this? You know what? I, I've got to tell you, I'm going against... I can already tell from talking to a few radio stations, stuff like that, there seems to be some kind of a hostility building up towards this. But, I mean, I don't know what people are scared of. I mean, this guy is, like, so unthreatening. I mean, do you know what I mean? I think he's great. I met him at the AMAs the other day. He was really nice. He was really funny. He was really friendly. And I think he's done one of the more interesting versions of one of our songs that I've ever heard because most versions that end up of our songs end up being something that's very unimaginative and and very close to the bone and at least this is very different i think it's really cool in 2017 the album would be reissued and boone would reveal that there were plans to release a second covers album telling inquisitor because it was a big hit i was already preparing a list of other songs to do for volume two and some of the groups immediately after was like poison the scorpions aerosmith they were saying hey why don't you do one of our songs Bruce Reznikov, the exec at MCA, they thought it was a fluke and that volume two might not work, although they were selling the fire out of the first one, but they just quit while we were a hit. That does it for today's video, guys. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like button and subscribe. We'll see you again in Rock and Roll True Stories. Take care.